This is a TV show called Flashpoint. If you're unfamiliar, it's owned and operated by Kenneth Copeland on his Victory Channel. It's hosted by Gene Bailey. If you don't know Gene Bailey, he's like this pastor, you know, uh, an extremist nutcase, a televangelist kind of guy. Anyway, this is really all about Donald Trump, loving Trump, whatever they can do for Trump. They want Trump to succeed. It's the Trump TV show, honestly. It's insane. So they're going to talk about Trump's position on abortion because he apparently just made an announcement about it or something like that. And while we listen to this nutter buttery unfold before us, we're going to play some Tears of the Kingdom. Zelda Tears of the Kingdom should just be in the background. It shouldn't bother you too much if you've never seen it. But yeah, let's listen to Trump talk about how pro-abortion he is, to, how totally super 100% pro-abortion he is. Good to be here. Awesome. Yeah, good to have Thanks. you. All right. To we touched here. on this last night, and I want to go back to that. We're going to pick back up because this is was in the news uh, as well. So let's play the clip from a President Trump, his statement on abortion. Watch. Many people have asked me what my position is on abortion and abortion rights, especially since I... The answer to what is Trump's position on abortion and abortion rights is he doesn't give a shit. Truthfully, he doesn't care. He's never cared. What he cares about is getting the votes of everybody in the country to the best visibility, except for his political enemies. He wants them dead. He wants the evangelical vote. That's what he's shooting for. So whatever they need to hear to believe that he stands with them or whatever, he'll say it. That is his position on abortion. He literally he fought to be anti or to be pro-choice back in the day, like forever ago, like before running for president or anything, he fought to be pro-choice in an interview. I think this is when he was like 65 or 66 or something. And then suddenly he met a kid who would have had, you know, would have been like the mom was going to have an abortion, but she didn't. And now he's anti-abortion because of that. It's just ridiculous nonsense. Like he's not believable at all. He's very clearly faking any kind of righteousness or, or any kind of religious belief of any sort, right? I don't see how evangelicals don't see straight through this nonsense, honestly. I was proudly the person responsible for the ending of something that... Oh my God, does he ever shut up about this? All legal scholars, both sides, wanted and in fact demanded be ended. Really? Really? All legal scholars on both sides demanded, wanted and demanded that, that Roe v. Wade come to an end and Casey come to an end. Totally, totally. It, Roe v. Wade. My view is now that we have abortion where everybody wanted it from a legal standpoint, the states will determine by vote or legislation or perhaps both. And whatever they decide must be the law of the land. In this case, the law of the state. Oh, okay. So he's not calling for a federal ban, apparently? Many states will be different. Many will have a different number. Because that's really interesting because um, Republicans overall do want a federal ban on it. Like federally, they want to say states are not allowed to provide abortions or to allow abortions. or whatever. You're not allowed to get an abortion. I don't care what state you're in. Federally, the federal government is going to ban abortions. That's what... Lindsey Graham, for example, has specifically said they want a federal ban, ultimately, the Republican Party. That's where they are politically. But I guess Trump says he doesn't want a federal ban. He wants the states to decide, which is what it is right now. States are deciding whether they should have abortion. Really interesting. Okay. This is actually kind of a controversial position that Trump is espousing right now a little bit. Quick interjection, I promise this won't take long. Don't skip forward. I just want to shout out my Patreon. If you guys like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. Also, watch the video to the end if you can, or at least a couple extra minutes. Every extra minute counts because YouTube bases video reach off of watch time. All right, back to the video. The law of the state. Many states will be different. Many will have a different number of weeks or some will have more conservative than others, and that's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You Really? The will of the people? You think it's about the will of the people? Okay, great. Well, we have polling that shows us that the will of the people 
is that abortion should exist. Vast majority of the United States wants abortion to exist. On top of that, the majority of the country didn't, they want Roe v. Wade. I think it's 60-40 wants Roe v. Wade. And without fail, every time this is put on a ballot, even in the most extreme far-right states, it still ends up, you know, on the side of abortion. Like in Ohio, Ohio put it to vote on a ballot initiative or whatever to determine if abortion should be allowed legally. And the answer was a loud, resounding yes, allow abortion. West Virginia was going to do that, and Jim Justice decided, the governor, he said, no, nope, never mind, we're not going to do the ballot initiative, we're just, I'm going to ban it. Same with Florida, they banned it. They didn't put it on the ballot, they didn't ask the voters, hey, what do you think, should we have abortion? No, they banned abortion. So it's not up to the will of the voters. That's not what he's shooting for. That's not what the Republican Party is shooting for. I can't, honestly, I'm surprised that they banned it in the first place. I thought for sure that these people didn't give a shit about the issue, that it was really all about fundraising, that this is an easy thing to fundraise off of. I thought for sure that's what it was about. But I think that the tail started wagging the dog at some point. I think that at some point, somewhere along the line, people started believing their own propaganda. That's what they will be. At the end of the day, this is all about the will of the people. You must follow your heart or, in many cases, your religion or your faith. Now it's up to the states to do. The Bible is in favor of abortion. God in the Bible instructs people how to perform an abortion and says that you should do this in some circumstances, like if you think your wife's cheated on you, for example. They've, you know, the Bible placed a price on the life of an unborn child, the life of a fetus, the life of uh, a pregnancy. And it's not the same weight as a human life in the Bible. So I don't want to hear any of this bullshit that Christianity and Judaism, or I'm sorry, let me rephrase. So I don't want to hear any of this bullshit that Christianity is opposed to abortion. It's not. It shouldn't be. Nonsensical if it is nonsensical to believe that judaism is in favor of abortion by the way anyway it's not for religious reasons it's because they wanted a fundraising issue do the right thing like ronald reagan i am strongly in favor of exceptions for rape incest and life of the mother that's surprising really surprising you must follow your heart of this issue but remember you must also win elections to restore our culture and in fact to save our country which is currently, and very sadly, a nation in decline. You know, I, I think that Trump is probably saying he's in favor of exceptions, which these people are not in favor of. He's probably saying that because he recognizes that he's going to get the evangelical, uh, the evangelical vote anyway. If you just listen to these people, these are the evangelicals. These guys represent the evangelical vote that we're about to listen to here. They're going to support him no matter what. But... Trump realizes that he also has secular Nazis, people who aren't necessarily Christian or people who don't put Christianity at the forefront of their thought or their lives, but still want like Jews dead or still want this or that, you know, still want segregation or something like that for blacks and whites and think that Biden is less likely to bring us closer to segregation. Trump is more likely to bring us closer to it, so they're going to vote Trump. So I guess he's trying to call out to, like, the, what do you call it, like the, um, the pro-choice Republicans here to some degree, a little bit. All right, so there's a lot of people out there that are watching that are going... Yeah, let's see what these guys say about Trump. Again, evangelical voters right here. They, they, that's who these people represent. This will determine if I'm right or not. That were upset with this statement, felt like uh, President Trump should have come out 100% pro-life and said this. Then the others are going, no, wait a minute. Well, there's a lot. There's more to be considered here. This did get kicked back to the states, and the states need to do what their job is, which is your job and my job. Wherever we live, we have to be involved, which is we were not in 1972 and 73 when all that. All right. So fast. We were not involved um, when Roe v. Wade, 1972 and 73. Roe v. Wade was pushed through and Casey, the, the two decisions. 
Uh, interesting. You weren't involved in that. Suddenly, they're opposed to Supreme Court rulings. Sometimes they're in favor of them when it works to their benefit. Other times, they're not. There's no principle to be found here. I don't know if you noticed that or, or not. But these people don't have principles. These people, specifically, the ones on this show, and the evangelical voting bloc, by and large, they don't have principles. They don't care about anything specifically except for winning. That's it. Anyway, let's see what they say about Donald Trump. I mean, I don't think that these guys would say a single negative word about Donald Trump. They're going to find some way to spin this to make it positive about him. Fast forward to today. Things are happening. This happened. There was a law in 1864. Look at this from NBC News. An Arizona Supreme Court rules a near total abortion ban from 1864. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Um, an Arizona law from 1864 is pushed through. This is from before Arizona was even a state, to my knowledge. I don't fully understand how that worked. Is enforceable. So, Lance, this threw people into a tailspin. I mean, that's going to piss off voters like you wouldn't believe. Oh, my God. People are going to lose their minds over this and almost certainly make Republicans lose as a result. So we'll see. Uh, when they started seeing what happened with this abortion and now this abortion ban. Let me before I play any other videos, I want to get your comments here. Well, the comments I have are going to be really bothersome to most people. I don't know. Oh, here we go. I bet. Yeah. He's going to say the hard stuff, the hard truths that nobody wants to hear, right? Totally. Why we were spiking the football after Roe v. Wade. I think we all thought, oh, abortion's been turned over by the Supreme Court. It wasn't. The abortion debate went to the states. And now we find out how strong an influence the Christians have in their culture. Because Wilberforce could only overturn slavery, Gene, after a sustained pattern of public persuasion. If you don't persuade the people, what happens is you give the, your Democrat opponent a weapon to use against you because you haven't really made the case in the heart and in the mind and the conscience of humanity. You've only made it maybe in a ruling. Uh, so he's saying... We don't need to kick it back to the states. Wow, surprisingly, he's actually disagreeing with Trump here, but he's doing it in a uh, measured, kind, respectful way, basically, right? Fascinating. So he's saying we should do a federal ban. This guy, by the way, is the leader of a movement that is effectively, in my opinion at least, a Nazi movement. It's, it's a Christian movement, but it holds to the ideals of but it holds to the same ideals that the Nazis did, basically. Ethnic cleansing of anybody who is not pure, is not exactly what he wants them to be, or whatever. Uh, anybody who is not, like, uh, a Christian, and not just a Christian, but his specific brand of Christian, should be ethnically cleansed from the United States. Seven Mountains Dominionist is what it's what called. So what you've got here is a situation where you and I can be totally against abortion. But if you approach that from the wrong way and you allow the American culture in its depraved and dilapidated state to see that as an all or nothing issue that defines your whole presidency and campaign, you've actually succeeded in not being able to get elected. This is this is the this is the the Solomon decision that Trump had to make. How do I be strong for pro-life? Oh, my God, dude. This is a Solomon decision. Trump had a... Wait. Solomon? The guy? <laughs> this is so funny. He's literally talking about a guy who tried to cut a baby in half. The baby cutter. Baby cutter Solomon is what I call him. And he's, he's saying this is a Solomon decision that Trump had to make. The baby cutting decision. <laughs> oh, that the irony is just like... They, he... They have no way to detect irony, do they? Their irony detector is broken. Anyway, Solomon wasn't wise. He was dumb as dog shit. It, he was responsible. King Solomon, he's responsible for the kingdom being broken, being shattered into a million pieces. David, his father, handed the kingdom to Solomon in, in one whole piece, and they controlled the entire Levant area. They controlled the tariffs and the taxes and the everythings, if trade went from Africa to Asia, then those people, th that part of the kingdom, got a cut of it. And Solomon takes over and shatters it because he's so inept as a leader. Don't tell me he's wise. 
It sounds like something that he would retcon into his story. Oh, I was wise. I was wise. He was, he was an idiot. But communicate to my people that unless you win elections, you had zero influence over what happens in the future. You wouldn't have conservative uh, Supreme Court justices if you didn't have Trump in office. You don't get him in office. Or there you go. Whether you agree or not it is irrelevant. Oh, yeah, my, my horse named Steve. I forgot I caught a Steve earlier. Anyway, whether you agree with him is irrelevant. You should be voting for him. Yeah, I don't agree with him either, but we should be voting him in anyway because Biden's going to get us further away from no abortion at all, complete abortion ban. That's basically what he's saying here. You don't get the right people in office and you go back to zero. I am a concerned uh, American right now for what's happening in Arizona. It's a swing state. Right. If this issue is framed in a way that's destructive to us, you're going to lose Arizona fascinating so donald trump basically disagreed with the arizona supreme court's decision am i reading this correctly i think that's what happened he disagreed with the the arizona supreme court's decision to ban abortion completely by saying that he thinks that there should be exceptions and lance walna is now kind of like saying that this is a bad thing we need to stand unified against abortion completely unified well, abortion is not a popular issue. Nobody wants to erase abortion from existence completely, practically. Lance Walna is one of very few people who holds that position. It's just the evangelical voting bloc, effectively, that, that believe in that. Well, the liberal left loves, loves the abortion topic. They love the liberal left this because it's so polarizing. What I said last night is that we didn't do our part in the early 70s. When I say we, I'm talking about the church, didn't stand up and take this on. We want to put that. Um, yeah, that's because it's not a religious issue at all. It is a political issue solely and completely. That's why the church, quote unquote, did not take this issue on. Christianity is in favor of abortion or should be. According to, uh, what do you call it? According to the Bible, God was in favor of abortion. So, yeah, the church picked this issue up as uh, an issue that they could radicalize people over. And that's why they talk about it today, because it's easy to get people whipped into a blood frenzy over it. That decision off on somebody else, therefore they have to take care of it. Let's just elect the right guy and everything everything will be great. It'll be a Honestly, I think the Roe v. Wade decision was exactly perfect. It's exactly right. I couldn't I, I would not have made a better choice. I couldn't have written a better bill than Roe v. Wade, the way that it wasn't a bill, but you know, a draft or whatever. I couldn't have written it better. It's perfect. Absolutely. Up to twenty weeks, it's elective. That's before you can find out the gender, by the way. You can't even find out the gender until like 22 weeks or 24. Uh, up to 20 weeks, it's elective. Beyond that, it's for serious extreme exceptions. That's it. A federal law, but that's not what happened, Rick. It went to the states, which is really where it should be, don't you think? Wow, he's agreeing with Trump right now. Lance Walnut disagreed with Donald Trump said, no, it should be federal. We should federally ban it. And Gene Bailey is disagree or he's disagreeing with Lance Walnut and agreeing with Trump. There, that's fascinating. There's no unity among these people. There's almost always unity because this is just a propaganda TV show, a propaganda show for Donald Trump. Wow, that's fascinating to me. They'll write a new bill and Biden will make it law. I have full confidence. Well, the Supreme Court banned it. Basically, um, the, the Supreme Court made it so that it went back to the states and the states decide, which effectively made abortion much, much harder to get and made it less likely that people would get one. So that's absolutely awful. However, as KJ Dog Love says here, they'll write a new bill. Biden will make it law. I have full confidence. If we voted in the right number of people, we could reestablish abortion. We could reestablish Roe v. Wade with a bill like through co through congress we could reestablish it we can overrule the supreme court if we use a legislature to do so but will we be able to get enough people to do it is the real question that's a challenge maybe
Guess we'll find out, won't we? I don't remember. Is it a super majority or just a majority? How many senators to pass a bill? Is it a majority? Yes, it's a majority. A simple majority passes a bill. And I believe it's a simple majority for the House also. Yes, a simple majority. So, to pass a bill. But the president, I believe, has veto power. So, if, if all three chambers of government, the executive and the legislative branch, if all three of them are not in harmony with each other, then a bill will not get through. Right now, we are split right down the middle in the House. We have a majority in the Senate, I believe, but we're split right down the middle in the House, and that is making it really difficult to get anything done. I think Republicans technically have a majority at this immediate moment in the House, a narrow majority. Anyway, it's conceivable that this round, this um, you know, this election that's coming up soon, this could be the one where we get enough people in the House and the Senate to overturn what the Supreme Court did and reestablish Roe v. Wade as codified law. It's possible. If you get out there and vote, it could happen. And what just happened in Arizona, prime example of why you should be voting in every election, state level, not just federal. Federal matters much less than state level, but you should be voting for county commissioner and all the way up to like everything, Supreme Court of the um, of the state, if you can. I think it depends on the state, if you can vote in judges or justices or whatever. Anyway, the point is you should be voting in every single election, no matter what, always. Well, if I could wave my wand, I would love to solve this with a, you know, one act of legislation or right. pass a constitutional amendment to outlaw abortion and it'd be done for all 50 states. And So he's saying, if I could wave a wand, then I would ban it federally. I would agree with Lance Walnaut. But... I agree with Gene Bailey. Wow, he's trying to take a middle position on this. Even from, you know, I, I can use language in the Constitution to say that it should be illegal to take a life even in the, in the womb. But that's not where we are, you know. That's not what's happening. My God. Well, freedom is messy. The process is messy. And this is a 50-state battle at this point. It's no, Nobody's going to be able to wave a magic wand. And Donald Trump can't wave a magic wand to do this. I don't think— No, but, you know, Lance Walnaut, what he's doing here— He's trying to move the Overton window to the right. He's trying to keep this as part of the discussion. He's trying to make it so that people are thinking about this. They're keeping it in the back of their minds at all times. That's why he thinks Trump should get out there and say, I want to federally ban it, because it would give a lot of breath to that movement. Instead, Trump gave breath to the exceptions rule or whatever, the exceptions um, concept for abortion he thinks that exceptions should exist for abortion and that i guess really pissed off lance walna fascinatingly i think there's any way that this solution is going to come from the federal level right now and just like with <laughs> slavery it took a long time unfortunately a, an actual war to make it happen and then of course as as lance uh, alluded to wilberforce in england uh it took you know 50 years of, of fighting that battle to finally end slavery so I wish it could all be done overnight. It can't. So it's a 50-state battle. We're going to have to be uh, better at fighting that battle in each of these 50 states. Uh, Lance uh, talked about, uh, I think, exactly what the battle should be. We've got to get better at articulating our principles, why life should be preserved, win over more and more people. Absolutely use the— Life should be preserved. Life should be preserved. I value life over anything in the universe. It's the most precious thing in the universe. But— and a six-week-old embryo or six-week-old, a six-week-old pregnancy is not really a life yet. Not fully. There's no, like, it's literally just a clump of cells. I'm killing more cells right now than I would kill with IVF. Like, way more, like 15,000 times more cells just by scratching my nose. It's not a life. There's no heartbeat. There's no nervous system. There's no brain. There's no nothing. It's literally just a clump of cells. At that point, I'm sorry, I just disagree. It's nonsense. It's nonsensical for you to put people through a horrific ordeal, a horrific experience for nothing. 
the law, pass these laws in the states where we can. And I say this as someone who I helped pass pro-life legislation in Texas. Mm, oh, yeah. He was a Texas legislator, and then he tried to become a Texas judge or Texas Supreme Court justice. I don't remember. And he lost, I believe. And the other uh, his opponents endorsed, you know, they dropped out and endorsed somebody. That's what always happens. And I, I believe Rick Green sued them for something. I don't remember what it was. Sued them for defamation or something like that. Yeah, it, it just embarrassing and sad. Output. Evangelicals don't see it because they're blinded by the abortion issue. It's like nothing else matters or something. Also, Trump will say what he needs to say to get reelected. He has no opinion. I agree. Absolutely. 100%. I don't think Trump has an opinion on pretty much anything. I don't think he gives a shit about anything. I think it's all about how much control and power he can get. That's what it's all about. Uh, what, like at the, the end of the day, when Donald Trump lays his head down on his pillow at night, what is he thinking in the dark with nobody next to him because Melania is laying next to Justin Trudeau instead or something? What is Donald Trump thinking about? I would like to think that he was thinking about guys, but sadly, I don't think that's it. I think what he's thinking is, how do I get more power? That's the bottom line. That's all that's on the dude's mind. Hang on. Did Rick Green just say it took a war to get rid of slavery? Or am I imagining? Oh, my God. You're absolutely right. I didn't even notice that. Wow. You know what? That's a really good point. I need to step back and wait. 30 seconds earlier. Okay, let's see what and he says. And this is a 50-state battle at this point. It's n Nobody's going to be able to wave a magic wand, and Donald Trump can't wave a magic wand to do this. I don't think there's any way that this solution is going to come from the federal level right now. And just like with slavery, it took a long time, unfortunately, a, an actual— Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's good. All right. So, And I, you know what? I bet that everybody on this show is just going to completely gloss over it. Like, <laughs> they're going to pretend he didn't even say it. Okay, l listen one more time to what he said about slavery. That's That's— Fantastic. I love it. This is messy, and this is a 50-state battle at this point. It's n Nobody's going to be able to wave a magic wand, and Donald Trump can't wave a magic wand to do this. I don't think there's any way that this solution is going to come from the federal level right now. And just like with slavery, it took a long time, unfortunately, a, an actual war to make it happen. And then, of course, as, as Lance uh, alluded to, Wilberforce in England, uh, it took, you know, 50 years of, of fighting that battle to finally end slavery. So, I wish it could all be done overnight. It can't. So it's a 50 like I, I, I'm sorry. I'm lost. I don't know what the hell this guy's talking about, but whatever. 50 state battle. We're going to have to be uh, better at fighting that battle in each of these 50 states. Uh, Lance uh, talked about, uh, I think, exactly what the battle should be. We've got to get better at articulating our principles, why life should be preserved, win over more and more people. Yeah, I agree that life should be preserved, but that's not what you're doing by banning abortion. A matter of fact, he banned abortion or he wants an abortion ban to such a degree that it would actually kill more people like it, women would die because it's not safe for them to continue this pregnancy. But there are no exceptions to it, for example. I, that's what Lance Wallna is advocating for that type of situation because he doesn't have principles. He doesn't care about life. You think this is about life? No, it's not about life. It's about. God, what is it about? Like, why are they doing this? you got to wonder, like, why are they trying to ban abortion? I think that's just got away from them. Like, it's I think as an issue, it started out as a fundraising thing. And I think now it's just like there are true believers who really, truly do believe that it's about life. And now, Lance Walna, I think he's a cynical actor. I don't believe that he buys anything that he really says, but I don't know what his reasoning is for, you know, wanting to ban abortion, for his interest in banning abortion, his specifically, I mean. Absolutely use the law, pass these laws in the states where we can. And I say this as someone who I helped pass pro-life legislation in Texas when I was legislator. I'm 100 percent pro-life, no exceptions. That's my position. But I totally understand what Donald Trump is doing with his position. And we should celebrate the fact that this guy who's watched by more people on the planet than any other human being, is talking about the value of life, that he talked about the evils of abortion and some of the other parts of, this, of the speech, uh, talked about how awful it is, what, what the Democrats want to do, where, which is to murder the baby at the end of the nine months and even oh my God. after the baby comes out of the womb. Nobody wants that. Nobody has ever advocated for that. It's just completely fabricated out of the ether. 
this guy is fear mongering, trying to scare the shit out of old white people and make them think that Democrats are in favor of murder. Just nonsense. Boom. So we should be thankful th that he is willing to to talk about the evils of abortion and talk about the incremental steps necessary for us to be pro-life in this political environment in which. Wow. So, you know, I, I'm I'm pro-choice. I think that being pro-choice is the obvious answer. And if you're not pro-choice, if you are like, quote unquote, pro-life, as these people claim. Oh, shoot. I totally forgot. You can't use bombs here. <laughs> oh, God. And if you're if you claim to be pro-life, then you're completely full of shit. I'm pro-choice. However, if I were pro-life, I think that it would be in their benefit for Trump to talk about you know, life of them, or uh, talk about a federal ban. It would be beneficial to them if they talked about a federal ban. Shit, I'm going to die if I don't do something quickly. Which we've been planning. Freedom is difficult. Tyranny's easy. If you want a dictator yeah, uh, and let them make all the rules by themselves and not have to go through the process and win the hearts and minds of the people, go somewhere else. I wow. Uh, fascinating. So this guy's claiming that he doesn't want a dictatorship well that's simply false <laughs> like he's just completely full of it yes he does want a dictatorship with trump as the dictator because uh, that may sound good in one instance it's horrible in every other instance freedom is difficult it takes time stay in the fight this is a generational battle we're gonna right okay fine yes that's correct except as lance Walna said you should be moving the overton window to the right if you are in favor of like banning abortion completely then you want the biggest voice in the republican party saying that publicly it would have been beneficial for trump to say yes i am in favor of evangelical or yes i'm in favor of uh, banning abortion outright on a federal level it would have been beneficial but trump may not have like so he would have kept all of his voters regardless of what he said but he may not win a general election if he said something else. So maybe he was thinking about his general election chances. It's interesting. Like, why would Trump say such a thing? Why would Trump come out and say he's in favor of exceptions? It seems to me the only reason he'd do that is because he wants to increase his chances of winning against Biden, right? There are basically no relevant Republicans that are single issue voters on this issue on abortion and also wouldn't vote for Trump anyway. Gonna have to win. All right, well, let me show you what, uh, <laughs> yeah, you just pay attention. There'll be a test after this. Senator Mark Kelly's reaction to the ruling. Mark Kelly, uh, the brother of astronaut Scott Kelly, I think, twin brother. Uh, they're both very intelligent. They're both Democrats, to my knowledge. Uh, Mark Kelly, or no, Scott Kelly, Mark Kelly's brother, I believe, um, went to space for a year, famously. He was the first person to ever spend a year in space. He spent it at the International Space Station. Take that, Flat Earthers. This is classic. Watch. Yeah, Mark Kelly, I believe, is a senator of uh, Arizona, one of the senators of Arizona. First of all, what's your reaction to the ruling? And for folks who don't live in Arizona... Can you explain why the Arizona Supreme Court would rule this way? Well, Jake, let me start by saying this is a disaster for women in Arizona. Arizona women deserve the right to make their own decision about abortion. And now they can't because of Donald Trump. So let's be clear about that. Uh, why did the Arizona Supreme Court do this? It's because Do Dobbs, the Dobbs decision over... Dobbs was the decision that overruled Roe v. Wade, right? I was thinking it was... Um, gay marriage, but that was Obergefell, not Dobbs. Returned Roe v. Wade. It was the law of the land since 1973, and now women have lost a fundamental right in our state. It's all Trump's fault. I should have known. Uh, I mean, they say that. It isn't like Mark Kelly saying that. They say that. We have Trump to thank. Trump just said that. You have me to thank for Roe v. Wade being overturned because I installed those Supreme Court justices. Basically, I, that, I do a bad Trump impression. I apologize, but I did my best. Anyway, the point is, they say that. Like, it's not Mark Kelly saying that. It's them. Women have lost a fundamental right in our state. It's all Trump's fault. I should have known. Dutch, it was Trump's fault the reason this all happened. Get your comments on that. Dude, this is a joke. 
Well, I, I'm, I'm proud of what President Trump did, and I'm pleased with what he did. Uh, see, he's admitting it. Are you hearing this? Are you kidding? This guy is saying, yes, it was Trump. I'm pleased with what he did. Yes. <laughs> this is just a joke. These people are the biggest jokes alive. They're going to blame everything on him. We know that. But we prayed for this. It was literally his fault. Yes, many of us for 40 to 50 years. And he gave us the court, finally, that would overturn this evil ruling. Oh, okay. So it's not Trump's fault because you were praying for it. It's your fault. I see. Now it's, I agree with what, it, what these guys are saying. It's right where it needs to be. It's in the hands of the states. We don't want to. Wow, that's fascinating. So Dutch Sheets is disagreeing too because he recognizes that the abortion issue is real touchy. And advocating for a federal ban is going to hurt Republicans like terribly in elections. That's a, a direct disagreement with Lance Walnaut. That's fascinating because... Walna is one of the leaders of the Christian nationalist movement, one of the biggest leaders. Yes, these guys are leaders, but Walna has prayed with Donald Trump and stuff. Walna leads the charge in large part behind the scenes for the Christian nationalist movement. You don't hear about him very much, but televangelists listen to him. To have to get our hands dirty at a local level and persuade people and do it the way the, really the framers intended, and that would be at a state level. But we're going to have to do that now. Framers did not intend it that way. They're just completely full of shit. And also, we live in a different world anyway than we did before. It's not 13 colonies that are all split up and have different... It's not like... They want a, a system more like the EU, basically, where the European Union... It has 13 or I don't know how many, they have, how many do they have? Has some number of like independent states that have completely independent laws from each other. Totally unrelated, totally disconnected, so on and so forth. In reality, it's not because they want to like, you know, it's not any prince. It's not based on principle. None of what they're saying here is based on principle. It's all based on what can we get out of this? And we're going to need to persuade people and we're going to have to do the work. But I would just add one thing. And since I can't say any better than these guys did regarding the civil aspect of this and laws, there is revival coming. Amen. And enough, some things are not going to change until enough people have God's laws written in their hearts Amen. and their conscience awakened. And we have to also be praying for that because once this awakening, this revival comes, it's going to do what none of us can do through legislative acts and laws and that. Okay, so we can advocate for not banning abortion on a federal level right now because that will hurt us if we advocate for a federal ban. And when Jesus comes back, he's going to fix it all anyway. I, I think that's what this dude is saying. Am I picking this up correctly? I, I think so. That has changed the hearts of people. So we can't cram it down their throats. I think Trump's making a pretty reasonable uh, uh, statement and approach saying, look, I did what I needed to do to get it back, get it off the, off the uh, national uh, legislature and laws. Now you guys do what you need to do. But I mean, it's an incremental process. Yeah, they, they got abortion removed from like the, the abortion protections removed on a federal level. So now states can decide, yeah, I want to ban this and... There, there's nothing stopping them from doing so. But the next step for pro-lifers is banning it federally. That's the next step. But they're not going to talk about that right now, the, the people on this program, most of them anyway, except Lance Walnut apparently, because it's detrimental to their movement because they know if they talk about it, it's going to make it harder for them to win elections. But I'm saying to the church, let's take it a step farther. Let's get keep praying and birth this outpouring of Holy Spirit because that's going to change the heart. There are a lot of people pro-life now that weren't before they that's came right. to Jesus. And that's, that's what right. we need to see happen. So I think Dutch Sheets is saying the more reasonable and logical position and safer position for Republicans overall, he's espousing the idea that they should just take it easy, be careful, and not talk about this too much. Because if they talk about banning abortion completely too much they're going to lose it'd be it'd be beneficial to 
the pro-life movement if Trump came out and talked about how abortion bad and he wants to ban it federally. It's beneficial to the Republicans if he talks about, you know, accepting certain, you know, if he talks about certain exceptions being permissible. God, talking about exceptions is like a lot, a lot harder to do than you'd think. Let me show you that, Pastor Hank, I'll let you look at this. Leo Terrell Post, 210 Democrats vote against the bill requiring medical care for babies born alive after abortion attempt. I'm sorry, what? Who is this person? Why should I believe a word out of their mouth? Why are you quoting some random Twitter account? 210 Democrats vote against bill requiring medical care for babies born alive after abortion. Like, what? This doesn't even sound realistic. This is absolutely twisted out of proportion, right? They completely warped this to be something other than what it is. I'm 100% sure of that. Hold on, can I kill these guys with splash fruits? I can. I didn't know you could kill those guys with splash fruits. Interesting. Oh, it's on Fox News. Oh, it's absolutely bullshit. Yeah. Okay, I saw I see the link in the corner now. Bottom left there. That's ridiculous propaganda. So, Pastor Hank, what that says is if a baby if if they tried to abort it and it's still alive, 210 Democrats vote against the bill. Saying I mean, just complete nonsense, of course. It's Fox News. I, it blows me away that these people believe Fox News unquestioningly. Well, it, it blows me away that anybody believes Fox News unquestioningly, but these guys, I can see it. Anyway, just com complete nonsense. There should be medical care for that baby. It's going to be interesting to hear uh, Lance, or I'm sorry, um, Hank Kuhneman's position on this, though, because he's uh, like, you know, claims to be a prophet of God, speaks for God. He puts himself on par with and might be as influ influential as Lance Walna. Well, I think, again, Pastor Gene, to uh, Dutch's great point, and, and of course, Lance and Rick, great points. But Dutch said something I think is key, and I think it is happening. America is waking up. And Dude, I love it how they're framing it all as though they all agree with each other, even though they all have differing opinions. There is something that is necessary. It's called a heart change. And Jesus does that as well as the moral heart that is written upon everyone. The Bible says in Genesis 3. After There's, it's necessary to have a heart change first, right? So it's not a popular position in the United States is what he's saying. And he's correct about that. Not popular to have a federal ban. So we should just shut our mouths and wait until it's more popular. Lance Walnut is in favor of banning it outright. Everyone else on the show seems to be in favor of just clamping it until it's more popular. After Adam and Eve sinned, now they will know right from wrong, good and evil. And that's in the embedded into everyone. And so it's embedded into everyone. <laughs> he said embedded into everyone. <laughs> I think he meant embedded, of course, but uh, that was a fantastic little slip. That's good. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's amazing to me that the Democratic Party for years have pushed the killing of the unborn and they continue Oh my god. continue to redefine, they continue to push for it and uh, you know I was watching some of the campaign. Hey, nobody is redefining anything. Like what the hell do you mean redefining? Redefining what? He's mixing up his arguments. His argument against gay marriage is that it's attempt it's an attempt to redefine marriage it's not but that's the argument what do you mean who's redefining anything for abortion what and on the left as well as those on the right it's amazing what the right's talking about they're talking about life they're talking about how about this the american uh, people's lives you know what they've gone through since this administration the hardship but boy you don't hear any of the right is talking about how hard people have it and how we should take care of the working poor and the, the homeless and, and everything? Really? That's what you think? The right is talking about that? Okay. That's new. That needs to be on the soundboard, inbreded. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> okay, let me in Genesis 3 after Adam and Eve sinned now they will know right from wrong good and evil and that's in the embedded into everyone and so it's amazing to me that the Democratic Party for years that's funny I'm gonna have to think about that one maybe I can get that on the soundboard we'll see
have pushed the killing of the unborn, and they continue to redefine, they continue to push for it. And, uh, you know, I was watching some of the campaign on the left as well as those on the right. It's amazing what the right's talking about. They're talking about life. They're talking about, how about this, the American uh, people's lives, you know, what they've Totally, absolutely. That's all the right talks about, just the American people's lives and how important it is for people to blah, 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 blah. No, that, that is not what the right is talking about. They're talking about a federal abortion. You're literally the right. These people are the thought leaders on the right. What they're talking about is federal abortion ban gone through since this administration the hardship but boy you don't hear any of that on the left it's all about give us the right to kill uh more babies whether they're in the womb or outside and it's just sick but that is not nobody advocates for post-birth abortion okay that's a made-up fabricated fictitious term no one is in favor of post-birth abortion no one come back to reality guys please but here's the thing we have to remember. The Democratic Party is more unified about their lies and their lying and their accusations and their indictments. Look at what they're doing to President Trump. Right now, Democrats are much more um, united and cohesive than others. I, I got to give them that one. That's true. And the Republican Party or the conservatives tend to be divided. They strain at a gnat and swallow a camel or a donkey, you could say. And we got to stop it. What President or a donkey Trump was saying was true. It does go back to the states. What we need to do is realize we have the most pro-life president in the history of our country. What would you rather have, President Trump or what they want to do should they get in on the left? And I think we... Yeah, so he's advocating for what Gene Bailey was advocating for, just... We got to win, shut our mouths until the U.S. is more open to abortion, basically. Got to rally around what he's doing, what he's done. And I believe one day there's going to be such a heart change. Abortion will be abolished in the United States of America. Wow, Lance Walnaw, the outlier over here. Agree with you. We, we got to be right. stay engaged. Let me go back, Jason. Let's go to Carrie Lake. Let me show you her. <clears throat> Her statement. She released a statement on the Arizona Supreme Court. Uh, she says, in addition to covering the state of Arizona as fair and honest journalist for 27 years, I've traveled to every corner of the state on the campaign trail. I speak to more Arizonans than anyone. Abundantly clear that the pre oh wow, look at this. So she's given a list of things that she will oppose and fight for as senator. And here's the list. As the senator, Carrie Lake will oppose a uh, federal funding for abortion. Okay, nobody, there is no federal funding for abortion. Like what? Uh, federal bans on abortion. That one is interesting. That's exactly what Lance Walnut said. So Carrie Lake is doing what's beneficial for the Republican Party rather than the, you know, the evangelical pro-life movement or whatever. That is really interesting to me. Okay. Free statehood law. Oh, yeah. And she says, I will fight for baby bonuses. The earned income tax credit. Is that like the child tax credit? Is that what she's talking about? Usually Republicans oppose that. Making adoption more accessible and affordable. They also oppose that generally, Republicans do, because that means that, you know, when they say, when people say make abortion more accessible, usually we're talking about like making it possible for gay people to adopt if they choose. Uh, of course, Carrie Lake doesn't stand for that. She does not want gay, gay couples to adopt. Strengthening the economy so that mothers can afford a baby. Okay, well, that's specific. Thank you so much for the specific explanation. St wow, if I knew that all we had to do is strengthen the economy. See, I'm, I'm an idiot. Uh, why didn't I think of that? We should have just strengthened the stre ugh, we should have just strengthened the economy. I got to pull it together, man. I'm losing it. I can't believe that, that that didn't even occur to me. Thank you, Carrie Lake, for the really good idea. I'm stealing that. I'm stealing that idea. Yeah, we need to strengthen the economy. Uh, she wants to protect IVF also. That is a surprise because the pro-life movement, quote unquote, as as it's called, the anti-abortion movement, really what I should be calling it. The anti-abortion movement is against IVF, in vitro fertilization. With IVF, you have the idea is 
you take a bunch of egg cells from the mother and you take the sperm cells and you put them together in a petri dish, or as Marjorie Taylor Greene says, a peach tree, P-E-A-C-H-T-R-E-E, peach tree dish. You put them all, you put them together, you mix them, and you end up with, I don't know, 15 fertilized eggs, basically. It's called an embryo. And it's literally like uh, two cells, maybe one cell. Maybe it becomes one cell at that point. I'm not sure. The state on the campaign trail, I speak to more Arizonans than anyone abundantly clear that the pre-statehood law is out of step with Arizonans. I'm the only woman and the mother in this race. I oh, like that. <laughs> like that has ever mattered to Republicans. Like they've ever given a shit about that. Suddenly she likes to mention that she's part of a minority group. How convenient is that, huh? She is shameless, dude. There is no principle to be found with these people. None. Anyway, let me know what you think.